Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In the comments to a recent video, I got a request to make the Gagayan spacecraft uh, from India that they are planning to test later on this year or maybe early next year and then uh, send people in in 2022, I believe, or uh, I think it was originally late 2021 and it's going to end up 2022 now. And uh, Gagayan actually, I think, means spacecraft, so it's a little bit redundant to say Gagayan spacecraft, but anyway, um, so I, I've got a first draft. I, I'm not entirely satisfied with it just yet, but I've done a lot of work, so I decided to present it. Um, we've got the launch escape system, which is custom, though, uh, uh, well, I mean, it is really very white. The one thing that's missing from it is grid fins, but we've got grid fins that we could put on from other sources, so that's fine. It does require a decoupler. It doesn't have a decoupler on itself, and so I just use a procedural decoupler for that. And of course, I have my GSLV Mark III already. This is an adapter piece, and then this is the service module with solar panels and um, extend. So they extend like that, so they are proper. They do not uh, pivot, as far as I know. So for the spacecraft, I saw a lot of images and they weren't all the same. <laughs> uh, there was one very good uh, slide that had dimensions and seemed to be very uh, clear and made sense. And so I mostly went off of that. Uh, but there were, uh, of course, that only gave certain aspects of the spacecraft and I had to glean what I could from other things. And so I've done the best I can as far as that's concerned. As far as numbers go, we have some numbers to work with, like the mass of it, and that makes sense. The one good thing about it is it's light. Uh, in fact, right now it's 7.489 tons. Uh, we could probably fit more fuel in this. Uh, right now, though, it has 776 meters per second, so it's not bad. Now, the thrusters, I've decided to go with the thrusters off of the Chandrayaan uh, mission because that made sense to me. I have no idea uh, what the what the actual thrusters are supposed to be. <laughs> so I don't have that information uh, but using the same thrusters made sense so I just went with it and so th I just put the same four here. The block sort of reminded me of the lander from that mission anyway. And that does give us uh, really obnoxious burn time. You can see it's not not a whole lot of thrust. Uh, maybe... Oh, I forgot. I think I might have forgotten to multiply it by four. I think uh, it's each thruster is that much. Okay, that, that's the problem there. I was wondering... See, so we, we still have a few things that I need to fix, but I'll, I'll fix that aspect of it uh, for what I link in the video description. So I will distribute this though there are edits coming up and it'll eventually be part of the real spacecraft pack. So I've already edited that. So yeah, I accidentally put the thrust for just one thruster instead of four. Okay, but, uh, and then we have RCS here. Right now the RCS, uh, at least from the images, doesn't seem configured for docking with something. Um, it can turn the vehicle so that they can do stuff in, in orbit, but not actually dock. Uh, docking as far as uh, docking port, I don't know how well this can fit it given its size. It's only 3.5-ish meters in diameter here and obviously narrower at the top. Uh, the docking port would have to go none that, uh, no, not there. That's for the launch escape system. There. Uh, so it barely fits there and that goes on this so that'll uh, go off with the uh, aero cap there uh, because it's too big otherwise. And so I guess we'll leave that on. And so with the docking port, 7.689 tons. And according to the almighty Wikipedia, um, it, that's about what it ought to be. It says launch mass 7.8 tons includes service module. So uh, maybe with a little bit more fuel in here. So the parts are, there's a service module thing. By the way, this umbilical um, can be sort of released. I made that happen. Uh, so there's that. There's a decoupler for that. Uh, in the images, it didn't uh, wasn't completely conformal to the heat shield. So I, I I made it like that, even though my instinct would make it would be to make it completely conformal to the heat shield. If it's that way, it's that way. 
So um, there's a heat shield there, of course, and the capsule, and then the aero cap. I didn't make parachutes, I'm just using real shoots parachutes there. And um, there was an image of, uh, of this thing, and I sort of mimicked that. Though there might be six of those braces instead of four. This might be a little bit too close to the docking port. Okay, it's not on the docking port node. Uh, actually, it doesn't matter if it is on the docking port node, to be honest. Okay, so we need that to go on there. No, oh, uh, let's let's put the adapter first. And we have to be very careful that we get the launch escape system on the right node and not on the uh, not on the docking port node. If it's on the right node, that should line up with the adapter there, and then onto the rocket. Okay. Hopefully that's right. Okay, so that's that's what I've got. I only used the Mark three, a Mark one, uh, a Mark one three pod cockpit. I didn't make a custom cockpit. And I'm not too sure about the shine on this. We'll take a look at it outside. Uh, Gagan will uh, get you all the parts. There are eight parts you can see there. Um, the solar panels don't go in symmetry. They have a node, so so that they are placed properly. Okay, let's see how it does. Now, hopefully I haven't messed this up too much. Okay, so here we are. And you can see what the fairing looks like outside now. I don't know why it looks so gray inside. Looks a bit whiter out here. Maybe a little bit too plain, though. Anyway, uh, throttle up, SAS is on. And we are launching from the Indian launch location. So we are at the east coast of India and launch so it's just SRBs first with the GSLV Mark III and then uh, we will light the core in flight this is still just a test I'll give you the parts but uh, I think I'm at the point where I can fix things like you know the thruster levels and stuff like that so by the time you guys get the parts things will be okay but there may be some weirdness still. Sorry about the coast, that's just a real solar system thing. It is very reflective, it's sort of catching some blue, but it's sort of reflecting the wrong side? I don't know. Well, I guess the sky is blue too, so that's fine. Okay, igniting the core. Um, I'll have to pay attention to that rated thrust going down. Uh, probably okay to separate now. Alright, off they go. Okay, should I try the launch escape system? How dangerous is this, I wonder. Uh, go. Ooh. Well, that could do with a little bit of work. But at least it's off. Yeah, so... That you might want to be careful with. This looks good though. Again, of course, this these parts are for realism overhaul. In theory, they work with stock, but I haven't checked. And uh, in that case, it would fit a 2.5 meter rocket. Okay, next up we have a longish upper stage, so I probably should have pitched up a little bit more, but we've got plenty of Delta V. Alright, separation. And ignition of the CE-20. I really ought to put RCS thrusters on this stage, though. We don't have those yet. It does sort of look like this. It has this sort of tan, tannish brown texture. The tiles aren't all in even rows, they're staggered. So we are going to end up with quite a lot of extra Delta V and maybe I need to review the numbers on the GSLV Mark III that I have. Or maybe they just have a lot of spare just in case. Or maybe they underfueled this stage is also a possibility. 
because otherwise it has a very low thrust weight ratio. It's optimized for um, geosynchronous satellites after all. As the name of the rocket implies, it's a geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle. Okay, and shut down. 260 by 174. And all right, let's see spacecraft separation. Uh, sort of forward, but I might want to up the decoupling force on that. Um, so where is that? Adapter, yeah, we'll give it more decoupling force for sure. Uh, I think it's caught on actually. Okay, well. We've got Kerbal ways of dealing with that nonsense. Okay. Nope, oh, don't bump into it. Uh... Okay. So I don't know if it's foil down here. It was some sort of metallic texture, but it was indistinct in the images that I saw. I went with foil because that made sense and I sort of view this as sort of a Chandrayaan stage kind of thing. I don't know if that's the case or not. Okay, and those thrusters will have a lot more force. Um, and extend solar panel. Okay, where's the sun? So right now we're not recharging, but our solar panels are perpendicular to the sun, so that makes sense. Sun up actually is what the direction would be and the RCS seems to be working and it is recharging now that always seems more than I think it ought to be I only put 1.2 kilowatts per panel see 1.2 kilowatts 1.2 kilowatts how the heck is it getting 3.8? <laughs> how, how does that happen anyway? I don't know. Why is it doubling these? Uh, I mean, it should be just the 1.2 kilowatts it says here, right? Right? I don't understand. Okay, but anyway. There we are. Nice soul panel textures. Good. Alright. We are going to have to test return, so... Oh, we're already out here. That, uh, well, that upper stage takes a while. I think I should make the service module just heavier. I don't think it needs more fuel, but I think maybe its dry mass should be heavier. It doesn't make too much sense for a lower orbit vehicle to have um, this much delta V, I think. So that's the decoupler we want, and we'll also want to activate the RCS on the pod. RCS on the pod, uh, none of the images seem to show what it, where it was, the RCS on the pod. But it has to have some to just to control its orientation, and I, strictly speaking, just put enough to control its orientation. So there's no frills on that. Uh, the descent mode, technically it ought to, I mean, I would prefer to have a descent mode option at least. But I need to use the the realism overhaul descent mode version. And I've got the stock descent mode on here, but and that doesn't work with realism overhaul. Actually, um, vessel mass is 7.9 right now. I don't know what I was saying before, but maybe it's not lighter than it's ought to be. It seems to be about what they said it was. Though, it seems like they were basing, I don't know what they were basing the mass of it off of though. I don't know if we've got, inf we've got information about the pod, but I don't know if we've got information about the service module. It doesn't seem like we know much about it. So, okay, we are going to decouple the service module now. Sorry about doing this at night. So we're going to release the umbilical. And we're separating off to the side so it doesn't get in our way. 
Okay, thruster firing has died down. Separation. Okay, off it goes. And here our RCS should be active, so surface negative relative velocity. And we will assess its re-entry, which I have not done with this. I don't know how it's going to go. We've got a heat shield. We've got a blader. We've got RCS. It's not very powerful RCS. I copied the RCS off, the, off of the Chandrayaan mission as well. I mean, if you've got stuff that can be reused, might as well. But that might not be what they went with. Oh, incidentally, it's supposed to be seven days worth of supplies. We've got nine. Just in case. So, good enough for nine days. Uh, just looking at how it's controlling this, I'll increase the... the capsule's RCS strength, I think. It might turn this slowly, but it's always good to have an option to have more more power. So again, the docking port's not mine, that's from a different mod. That's a CX Aerospace docking port, I think. It says 5.664 tons, so I'm gonna have to review that. Why would it be that heavy? And it's supposed to be 3.5 tons, not 5.664 tons. I thought the service module was heavier. Maybe a blader is heavier than I thought it was. Well, we're gonna pass over the southern tip of India. I don't know if we can see the launch site from here. Oh, there it is. You can see it, there it is. Now we are slowing down. Oh, we got flame effects. That's not much ablation. I think I might have accidentally used one of those lunar, well, I guess it's all right. We don't know how good the Heat shield's gonna be anyway. But one of those lunar rated heat shields or something. Without the descent mode option, we can't control the G forces, but with it, we can. So we've got more G forces than we ought to right now. But the important thing is it survived. That's very important. I don't know if I need to pack this much MMH and NTO just in the pod. That uh, Cutting that out would lighten it up a little bit. But that's only maybe 0.2 tons. Okay, forward heat shield separation. Okay, that works. And arm parachutes. Okay, parachutes are out. Uh, we can turn RCS off. Okay, full parachute deployment brings us to 5 meters per second. Okay, so there are some pesky colliders, but the first thing is, why is the pod so heavy is what I'm wondering. Ooh, it's really bouncing in here. That's weirder too, but that's one of those Kerbal things I'm not going to... I'm not going to think about too much. First, let's uh, get the numbers right. Let's take that off. All right, 7.9 was what it said out there. Let's take this off. It says, oh, that's with the heat shield off. Whoops. Uh, no. Mm. no. Okay, so the heat shield is heavier than I thought. Uh, but the pod is also heavier than I thought. The dry mass was what I was looking for, but it's a whole 0.5 more. Uh, let me see, take that off. Uh, 4.3 now. Okay, so I'll take off uh, a little bit off of the dry mass of the capsule. Uh, 0.6 off to compensate for like the parachutes and and the supplies. I mean, I, I get the, they said 3.7 tons dry mass. I'm going to assume the dry mass includes the parachutes. Um, and includes the, well, I mean, dry mass, I don't know if it includes the RCS fuel or not. That's a, that's a tough question, but the uh, supplies should not be that expen uh, should not be that heavy, right? Uh, actually, it's like 
point two to point three tons. So okay, well we'll give it a little bit of room there. Um, but the heat shield though should be part of the dry mass too. So I'll take a little bit out of the pod for the heat shield. Um, that's a whole 1.1 tons it looks like. And I'll make the dry mass of the heat shield a little bit lighter too. Uh, you know, it could do with a little bit less of later. It could do with a lot less of later. Uh, half of later? 400 of later? Okay, so those steps in combination should bring us closer to what we want from this. But then we have to compensate by making this heavier. Okay, well, this is obviously still a work in progress, but I'll let you guys play around with it. It should be interesting. It seems like an interesting little pod, uh, since it's light, especially because it's light. So, we'll see. Anyway, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.